Welcome to the Lee Company's new crossover solenoid valve product tutorial. My name is Nick Tacheco, and I'm going to show you today how we've solved the flow selection problem in diagnostic instruments. First, I'd like to introduce you to the Lee Company. We were founded in 1948 here in Westbrook, Connecticut, and we've been growing and innovating in Connecticut ever since. While we started producing aerospace products, we developed some of the first products tailored to the automated in vitro diagnostics industry in the 1970s. Since then, we've consistently introduced new precision flow control devices designed to provide incredible value and all manufactured here in Connecticut. We have over 1 million square feet of manufacturing space, and we can boast that one in eight of our employees are engineers. Our incredible knowledge base allows us to offer unprecedented levels of customer support and our integrated manufacturing means that we can deliver customized solutions on a routine basis. Let me introduce myself. My name is Nick Tacheco and I'll be your presenter today. I'm an engineer myself with a degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Rhode Island. I started my career as an applications engineer, primarily focusing on precision dispense pumps and inert isolation valves. Today, I'm a product manager responsible for our internal pinch tube solenoid valves and our extensive lineup of dispense valves. Outside of the office, I spend a lot of time fishing and sailing out here on Long Island Sound. During the long winter months, I ski and moonlight as a computer repair enthusiast, which is probably unique among product managers. But enough about me, let's get started. Let's start off with a diagnostics design challenge. You've been presented with a design project where you need to supply a mixture of sample, reagent, and maybe a cleaning solution or calibrant as well to a flow cell. If you're involved in instrument design, this should be a pretty standard fluidic system for a diagnostic instrument. Your engineering requirements are first and foremost stabilized flow. You need to make sure that velocity through the flow cell is stable, especially in imaging or sorting applications. Your next objective will be to reduce the amount of expensive reagents consumed and to speed up the analysis time to make your instrument more marketable. Finally, as we're all being asked these days, you need to lower the cost and complexity of the system while simultaneously increasing its reliability. Breaking down the main requirements of this design challenge, we have a fluid system requiring components that deliver both flow selection and injection capability. These components must also enable smooth or laminar flow. The components must have a minimal internal volume but also carry over as little fluid from one sample to the next. A major factor in carryover is the ability to easily flush the components to speed up the time between samples. We also need this solution to be relatively fast, to switch over quickly and reduce cycle time. And finally, it needs to overall be economical. The value it delivers to your system must far exceed its upfront cost. Taking all of these requirements, we can then go shopping for components. Our first go-to will be the industry standard three-way rocker style isolation valve. These are great all-around valves and are inexpensive, small, and fast. However, their internal volume is fairly high and they don't flush easily, so more time and volume is needed when switching between fluids. Next is the rotary valve, which particularly excels at low volume switching. However, this type of valve is expensive, slow to actuate, and complex. Rotary valves also don't offer long life, so there are maintenance considerations as well. Or, at the very least, you will need to make some trade-offs in the control system of your instrument to reduce the number of cycles that you're putting on the valve. Finally, the rotary valve isn't exactly small and is several times larger than the other valve candidates. Last but not least, there is the tried and true external pinch valve, which offers laminar flow through flexible tubing, is exceedingly easy to flush, although it does carry one critical flaw. The tubing needs to re be replaced periodically. In a dialysis instrument, tubing replacement is a feature. However, in automated diagnostic instruments, this maintenance creates headaches for customers. After reviewing the legacy options available, you'll find out quickly that it's time to cross over. We designed this revolutionary internal pinch valve that excels in every category without making any concessions. Featuring just 11 microliters of total internal volume and an unbelievable 3.7 microliters carried over when switching, Crossover is the whole package. Crossover features a miniaturized flow path allowing for quick and efficient switching from one sample to the next. 
Let's return to our design challenge briefly. After replacing our selection valves with crossover, we have simplified the system architecture. We could also replace the three-way rotary valve controlling directionality to the syringe pump with crossover, and we'll show off an example of that later in this presentation. And now that we have your attention, let's explain why this valve is redefining flow selection. And remember, you can visit theleco.com slash crossover to learn even more. For the next section of this tutorial, we will cover the design story of crossover and show you how we approached the design of this valve and developed it into a market-defining new product. Like the instrument design challenge that we presented, we approached product development by breaking down the process into its fundamental components and built a product around the core needs of our customers. In order to properly present crossover, we need to dig into the background of the industry. As we noted at the beginning of this presentation, the original technology in this category is the external pinch valve, which operates by pinching flexible tubing shut with a pinch block and solenoid coil. These valves offer fantastic fluidic performance because they preserve stable laminar flow through the regular pathway of extruded tubing. However, the critical flaws of this design are the tubing itself, which needs to be replaced frequently, as often as monthly. In addition, a significant volume is actually carried over between samples due to the suboptimal positioning of the tubing connectors. We originally solved this problem back in the 1970s when we invented the LFY series. With the first design, the Lee company defined a completely new market. However, with any innovation, the first iteration was complex. For example, the original Y-valve used precision ground concentric bearings and dozens of miniaturized components within its mechanism. However, this original design did feature the first elastomeric pinch tube and was quickly adopted by customers thanks to its superior fluidic performance. We further refined this design in the 1990s as the LFY became a staple in diagnostic instruments. However, while this design offered excellent performance, it was not fully optimized fluidically or for automated manufacturing. Therefore, while it was a high value product suitable for its era, we began to see a need for even more performance. We began the design process for crossover by taking a blank sheet approach. And just like in the diagnostics design challenge, we identified the key variables we needed to control for. We reviewed the core technology and identified the most important features that were important to customers, low volume and the ability for fast flow selection. Next, we looked to reliability and how our customers were using, or at the very least wanted to use the current technology. The goal was to make sure that valves last the life of the instrument removing the need for maintenance or expensive service visits. In the diagnostic and analytical industries, material selection is an important characteristic, so we identified an inert flow path as a critical design criteria with bonus points for reducing the number of different types of materials as well to make qualification easier for customers. And lastly, we recognize the need to offer crossover with the highest possible value. This includes reducing the costs of any non-core technology and using innovative manufacturing techniques wherever possible to improve process efficiency. However, we recognize that value isn't just contained in the initial purchase price. If our product needs to be replaced for any reason, this reduces its value to you. Our first objective was to optimize the flow path of crossover. The legacy external pinch valve design incorporates multiple tubing assemblies with a plastic connector downstream. This increases both the total volume of the system and the carryover volume when switching. As you can see from the on-screen graphic, there's a significant volume between the pinch block inside the valve and the junction of the two tubes. All of this volume is wasted when you switch and needs to be flushed out, sometimes requiring large volumes of cleaning solution and reducing the sample throughput capability of your instrument. Previous generations of crossover, the LFY series, used a similar design to the external pinch tube valve yet were able to offer much lower volume. However, even so, there was still some volume left on the table for us to optimize with crossover. Therefore, we achieved the best possible flow path in a three-way solenoid valve by switching to a single piece molded tubing assembly, which you can see here in the on-screen animation. This minimizes the volume between the tubing pinch point and junction of the common port, resulting in just 3.7 microliters carried over between samples. 
Our next innovation was to improve the reliability of this valve to match the lifetime of the instruments it's designed into. We achieved our reliability goals through reduction of component fatigue. Our approach to improving the life was to study the wear effects on previous generations of valves and formulate solutions to delay the wearing of the mechanism. After developing the design, it was time to qualify. We subjected the valves to an intensive reliability test and have been able to qualify the valves to a significant number of cycles. We set a high standard for specifications for the life of our products because we understand just how expensive service calls are. If we had designed the best valve from an operability standpoint, but without industry standard materials, it wouldn't be a good fit for the diagnostics industry. Therefore, from day one, we ensured that we were using tried and true materials known for compatibility in your applications. From the peak ports to the highly engineered FKM molded tube assembly to complete the flow path, this valve will be easy to qualify in your system. You can see from the cutaway on screen how we achieved such a streamlined flow path with only two wetted materials. One of the benefits of starting product design with a blank sheet is that we can design for manufacturing using the latest state-of-the-art techniques. These not only lead to a more reliable product, but at an economical price point as well. The core of this valve is a unibody molded frame design. This gives us a certain degree of modularity and takes advantage of many principles of lean manufacturing, such as quick machine switchover and smaller batch sizes. This will not only allow us to offer a competitive product, but also one that fits into the fast paced and dynamic modern production environment. Together, all of these improvements to the product and process result in higher value delivered to our customers. Next, let's dive into some use cases for crossover and summarize the highlights of this impressive new valve. The textbook use case for crossover is to control the inputs and outputs of a positive displacement pump. Whether the type of pump is a piston pump, like what you see on screen, or a syringe pump as we presented earlier, Crossover is a great fit for replacing the rotary valves traditionally used for flow selection. Not only does Crossover have a much longer life than a rotary valve, but the internal pinch tube within Crossover dampens pressure pulsations created by the electromechanical pump. Another benefit is the bi-directionality of Crossover. It has no preference for either flow direction thanks to its mirrored flow path. Both are the same volume and restriction, so they perform the same. As you can see from the on-screen schematic, crossover could be used to aspirate fluid from a well plate and then direct that fluid to a flow cell or elsewhere within the instrument. Alternatively, it could be used in the reverse direction, dispensing reagents into a well plate for use in sample or library prep for PCR applications. The planar flow path and low volume of crossover brings another important use case to light. The valve can be used for injection into a flow stream. This is particularly useful for smooth injection of cleaning solution or of a calibrant into your reagent or sample line. If you're designing an add-on or optional accessory for your instrument and need to tap into an existing tubing run, Crossover would allow you to add that functionality without sacrificing the performance of the base instrument. Next, we'll cover some frequently asked questions about Crossover and then we'll conclude our tutorial. By far, the most common question we receive is what electrical driver to use with Crossover. Thankfully, Crossover is agnostic to the type of actuation technology that you use for its solenoid coil. The valve is rated for continuous duty, meaning you can actuate it and hold it open for an indefinite period of time at the actuation voltage and current. The coil will get warm, but this won't damage the valve as long as it's being operated within the ambient temperature range for the valve. Therefore, you could use a basic transistor circuit to actuate the valve, like we're showing on screen now, or you could use a relay or H-bridge motor driver chip to actuate the coil. A common concern with pinch tube style valves is whether they will get stuck open or closed when exposed to vacuum conditions. The most common source of this concern is when aspirating with a syringe pump, which can cavitate fluids and create a strong vacuum. I'm happy to report that Crossover is capable of handling a full vacuum throughout its life. The valve can open and close quickly and, as usual, efficiently. 
The dimensions of the tubing that you use will have an effect on the laminar flow performance of crossover. First of all, if you're buying crossover for its low internal volume and low carryover volume, it goes without saying that your tubing that you connect to the valve should be low volume as well. In addition to this, you want the inner diameters to match up between the valve and connectors. Changes in the geometry within a fluidic stream will introduce turbulence into the flow stream, especially where sharp corners exist. If this is important to you, we'd recommend taking this into account when designing crossover into your system. We offer some tubing assemblies for crossover that have inner diameters of 20 thousandths and 12 thousandths of an inch, which are very close to the inner diameter of crossover's tubing. There are so many different fluids used in the diagnostics industry that it's impossible to design a valve compatible with each and every one of them. That being said, if there are any questions about whether your fluid is compatible with crossover, we have chemical engineers on staff and can offer an expert opinion. In addition, we have material samples available for the wetted materials used in crossover that you can use in immersion testing with your novel reagents. Finally, we'll conclude with the crossover promotional video, which summarizes the features and benefits of this truly innovative valve. The Lee Company has always been at the forefront of fluid control. And now flow selection has never been easier with crossover. This innovative pinch tube solenoid valve is designed to switch quickly and efficiently between flow streams, allowing for smooth selection or injection of reagents, samples, cleaning solutions, and more. Whatever your fluidic requirements are, Crossover excels in every category. The valve features a total internal volume of 11 microliters and an unbelievable 3.7 microliters carried over when it's switched. Our simplified unibody design results in tremendous value for customers. In addition to optimizing the fluidics, we've increased the reliability, making it last the lifetime of the instrument. For decades, the Lee Company has innovated pinch valve technology, and the results speak for themselves. It's time to cross over. And before we go, I'd like to remind you that in addition to crossover, the Lee Company offers precise fluidic control for a wide variety of diagnostics applications, including immunoassay, clinical chemistry, molecular diagnostics, hematology, and flow cytometry. Our engineers have the technical knowledge and experience to understand your challenges, which enables us to provide accurate, reliable, long-lasting fluid control of liquids and gases, when and where you need it, at a competitive cost. And that's all we have today. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this presentation and walked away with a new understanding of the background of valve design as well as the capabilities of this impressive new valve. If you have a question, want to provide some feedback, or if you're ready to get started testing some samples, please visit theleco.com crossover to access all the documentation for this valve.